Hello, uh, dear colleagues, um, attendees, panelists. Uh, I'm welcoming you to a new um, session in the MEGA online course. Today is the um, Fluid uh, Stewardship Debate Symposium. Uh, we have a couple of interesting uh, lectures and then a debate after uh, afterwards. First, we're going to enjoy another lecture uh, with the title of Colloid in the Intensive Care Unit. This lecture will be presented by Professor Lalit Gupta, who is an Associate Professor of Anesthesiology in Mulana Azad Medical College, New Delhi, India. This uh, lecture will be moderated by Dr. Ranjit Chitterji, who is the head of the critical care accident and emergency in Swami Dayandan Hospital, Delhi. So colloids versus crystalloids. This debate is continuing for the last decades, for, for, I think for the last 50 years. And long before normal saline, uh, you're telling about the, the history in Iraq. We have forgotten about Thomas Atkinson Lata. He, first of all, this the first fluid resuscitation was done by him in 1932 in a patient who was suffering from cholera. And his composition of fluid, he made it at home and it, it it had uh, normal saline, uh, uh, sodium of around 118, uh, chloride of around 113 or something, and bicarbonate of around 80. So that was his composition that he started way back in 1832. And then in between, normal saline came, ringel lactate came, and colloids came up. Remember, when you are using colloids, the base of the colloid, that is the fluid in which the colloids have been mixed, is a crystal. You see the composition of a colloid, you'll find exactly what is there in that. So now colloids has been up till 2010, everything is going fine. People are using colloids, people are using crystallized both. But from then onwards, a few studies came up. And those studies basically were for the nemesis of the colloid. And I am sure that Lalit and Nishad will touch on those studies, give a very practical and pragmatic approach exactly. You are not fighting whether it should not be used or it should be used. Exactly how it should be optimally utilized in the management of critically ill patients so that more survival we can gain from it. So that is basically our aim. If I go for a vote now, I am sure that 100% or 90%, 92, anything above 90% will be favoring crystallites and they will not be favoring colloids. So I'm not going for any vote. I'm just giving the ball directly to Dr. Lalit. I think he'll be speaking in favor of colloids and Nisha will be speaking against colloids. So Dr. Lalit is a professor of anesthesiology in intensive care in one of the very premier institutes of India, Maulana Azad Medical College. It is in Delhi. It's one of the biggest medical colleges of India. And he will be speaking that colloids should be removed from the cells. He will be speaking against the colloid. And Nishant, Dr. Nishant Kumar, he is basically from, again, one of the very old medical colleges in India. That is also in the heart of Delhi, Lady Hardy's Medical College. It is the only medical college, one of the only medical colleges in India where it was only established for the for girl students. So at the MBBS, the undergraduate course is for the girl students. And we're proud of that college. And uh, Dr. Nishant will represent Lady Hardy Medical College and he'll be speaking against Dr. Lalit today. And I'll just ask Dr. Lalit to continue and give his ideas about what does he feel about the college. Good evening to all the dignitaries and the panelists and participants. I am quite thankful to the course, uh, Mega Online course, for giving the opportunity to present my views on why should the colloid be removed from the shelf as a resuscitation force. I would like to share my screen for this. Okay. I think is it visible to present is the colloid should be removed from the shelves of the ICU as resuscitation force. 
but does we really need to remove them and what are the evidences to support them that the colloids are not good as a resuscitation in ICU? Okay. So you know as the colloids are basically indicated as a resuscitation in severe sepsis in ICU. In case of hypovolemia or severe hemorrhage in ICU on the operating theaters or the resuscitation in case of the head injury or the traumatic patients presenting to the ICU or otherwise to the cathode. Since the cathode colloids are of two types, the natural means albumin and synthetic means gelatin, starch, and dextrin. Everyone has been tried in some or other meta trials to find their utilities. As Ranjit sir has very specifically said, it's a historical dilemma. The safety of the colloid for the last 60 years was, uh, it was like the colloid has been studied, both are safe. But in 1989, the safety of the colloid was first questioned by rudimentary meta-analysis performed by Veronique in 1989. And subsequently in the BMJ, it was published as a systemic review questioning the safety of the colloids in general. And a Cochrane review came in the 1998, with again questioned specifically the specific uh, safety of the albumin. But why these things were asked? There was at present, uh, there was no answer, no clear cut in their systemic review. They just presented that why should they be used or it should not be used. Till uh, in year 2004, there was this safer, safer trial which compared the albumin and saline for fluid resuscitation in the intensive care unit. This has the uh, randomly selected as a 4% albumin and normal saline for resuscitation in ICU. The primary outcome they measured was the death on 28 days. And the result was mighty albumin is not better than weaker crystalloids for saving the patients. While it shows only that albumin is just equivalent to crystalloid, another uh, group of the same study, which uh, worked on how the fluid should be given in the traumatic brain injury. Again, the part of the same study and they concluded that fluid resuscitation with albumin was associated with higher mortality than was the resolution resuscitation with slime. If you see this curve at the 28 days, the probability of survival, while it was with the 90%, 80 to 90 in case of the saline, it was just less than 60, even nearly about 75 to 70 in case of albumin. So albumin in 2004 came into the dispute that it should not be given as a resuscitation fluid. But then another study came as the intensive insulin therapy and pentasar resuscitation in severe sepsis. This study was a very important study at that time because uh, in 2008, it shows that acute renal failure is more common with head stars than ringer lifting. And it shows this was the dose which matters. It, if the ringer, if the head starch was given in the dose of less than 22 millimeter per kilogram, it causes the less, it causes the more survival than the dose of the 48 milliliter per kilogram on an average. So the bicep study was of the opinion that as starch was harmful and the toxicity increased with accumulating dose. This is why at that time 10% penta starch was questionable and it became uh, uh, use of, out of the use and newer starches came into the part. But again in 2000, if you see this after that, a hydroxy starch of saline food food resuscitation, there came the chest study, the very famous chest trial, which says the crystalloid versus hydroxy starch. They randomized the control and they compared the 6% volumin, which is the latest in the head starch, with the 0.9% of the sodium chloride, and they measured the outcome at 90 days. The conclusion was no significant difference in 90 days mortality, however, patient resuscitated with 6% starch or saline. The patient who received resuscitation with head starch were treated with the renal replacement therapy, means head starch was a culprit for renal dismemberment. Uh, the chest trial was very famous for the bottom line is starches. The starch based food do not provide a mortality benefit and lead to the increased renal dysfunction requiring renal replacement. And starch based food should not be used for volume resuscitation. These were the two endpoints of the chest trial. They shows although uh, renal replacement therapy was uh, more with the, the saline groups, new organ failure was also more with the hepatic in case of the hepatic, which was associated with 6% head starch. And apart from that, there was increased CM creatinine with the head star. So again, there was a question on the head star then in comparison to the slide. Then in another study came, which was the 6S study. It was a multicentric trial presented within patient with severe sepsis for fluid resuscitation in the ICU. They come, in this case, apart from the head stars, they compared either the tetranspar, that is a 6% head star with ringer acetate. 
and their outcome was that fluid resuscitation with tetra starch had an increased risk of death at 90 days and were more likely to require the renal replacement therapy. So like the chest trial, they are doing the same uh, uh, observation as per the Tetran star, because they showed that the dead dependent dialysis was significantly more uh, than and at the 90 days than the linger acetate. And similarly, the renal replacement was more around 87 versus 65 and renal replacement therapy 129 versus 108, which was quite significant in those cases for the rifle score of more than three. After that, uh, six study when it came that pental star and the tetan star both are not good for the patient and at that time uh, they are collectively of the opinion that the star is bad for you and it is really bad for you because it causes the more the mortality as well as the renal replacement therapy so the verdict in 2012 was that it should be end of the synthetic colloid because in another study by dalinger et al in the intensive care he published they showed that the steroids are grade 1b indications and it was against the use of the colloids for severe sepsis and septic shock and albumin is the fluid resuscitation when patient requires substantial amount of steroids the grade 2c that is least required and it is the very oftenly very less required indication at that time so 2012 was the landmark year when it showed that the synthetic colloid should be ended from their shelves but again then the famous crystal trial came into the existence. The crystal trial, it was the effect of the fluid resuscitation with colloid versus crystalloid in the critically ill patient with hypovolemic shock. It was a different opinion. It showed that 90 day mortality was lower among the patient receiving colloids, when it was a significant difference at 28 days. So this was the only trial at that time which supported the colloids. But again, this was in the 2013 and when it was published, there was a lot of controversy and discussion over it. And 2014, again in the JAMA, a explanation was published by another for this. They showed the mortality in present with hair stars treated with colloid and testicles has some limitation. One observed rate of death was lower than predicted, exclusion of the patient with intracranial hemorrhage in the survey, and those who clinicians considered unlike to survey were not included at the time of this inclusion. And patients were recruited only after admission to the ICU, that means when the requirement for food of resuscitation was often less than those who presented in the emergency room. They showed that the lower mortality in the testyloid group when the trial was stopped, which was not mentioned in the study, and denominator for 90-day mortality was wrong according to that. So the uh, crystal trial came into this controversial that colloids are better. And after that, uh, at the same time, then the European society came with the, uh, its own consensus that we should not use HESTAR with molecular weight more than 20 200 clodentin and or degree of substitution one more than 0.4 in severe sepsis or risk of acute kidney injury and suggest not to use 6% HSTAR or genetic in these populations. They were against the use of colloids in patients with head injury and not to administer genetic and HSTAR in organ data. So basically the European Society of Intensive Care, they have literally refuted colloids in every case, in being the resuscitation, in the head injury, in the organ donation or in the survival sepsis. Uh, this shows that uh, colloids were out, but again, people were working on the colloids that they should be used. And colloid versus crystalloid for fluid resuscitation, a meta review came into the existence. In this, 78 eligible trials were considered. It was a meta analysis. And they found that use of the hash stars might increase the mortality. And it is hard to see how their continuous use in clinical practice can be justified. So, they, in the, from the 78 trials, it was their conclusion that colloids are of no use. And then in 2014, another trial came, fluid resuscitation for trauma patient testyloid versus colloid, which was the landmark trial because it has, apart from the mortality, few other more observations. They said colloids are not associated with an improvement in survival and considered more expensive than testyloid. It is hard to see their continued use in practical practice can be justified. They compared literally and present the, all the mega trial of VICEP, the VICEP trial, Christmas trial, success chest and crystal trials. And they of the opinion that one of the major controversy that crystalloids are used in the 1 is to 3 or 1 is to 4 ratio is again a misnomer. It's a fiction. They found in all these studies, there was no or little difference in the suscitation volume of colloid versus crystalloids. And it was again, if the colloid was 1, crystalloid was only 1.5. That is only 1.5 to 2 times, not like the 3 or 4 times which was earlier quoted. So it was one of the observations from the mega trials. And another one was that out of the 424 studies, 
in the 19 studies they found that coagulopathy exists with the use of the hasta means while clotting time was not consistently prolonged weaker clot formation by virtue of impaired platelet aggregation were seen in those patient who received tetra star compared to the crystalloids or albumin so they have the another these findings which were very important in their deciding factor again the efficacy and safety of colloid resuscitation in critically ill this presented in 2008 and it explained few more answers are colloid more effective plasma expanders than crystalloids this found that hemodynamically changes by colloids are only immediate and do not last and do not lead to improved clinical outcome again extravascular lung water and pulmonary edema are not different after administration of hastat and crystalloids no clinical evidence to support to believe that colloids over long period of time result in less positive fluid balance or improved clinical outcome in critically ill or sepsis patient again they have the same opinion crystalloid versus colloid it between 1 and 2 and do hastat have the best risk benefit ratio among the synthetic colloids no and they again found that among the all the stars hastat and gelatin more than 33 are associated with increased renal failure and in the high dose hastat of 10% of 200 and 0.5 substitution with crystalloids have 41 versus 39% mortality that is very significant p is 1.09 and again is the third generation hastat of is safer than old generation they found that there were the similar incidence of renal failure in older or the newer starches so they completely this study completely refuted the use of colloid resuscitation and at the same time the new zealand uh, medicine society came with the uh, their specification on the volulat 6% had has starch that they should not be used in sepsis liver disease fluid overload renal failure head injury intracranial bleed bleeding disorders bone sensitivity and pre existing colloid bleeding disorder means they have refuted nearly all the uses of the volulates in emergency but again a change of colloid from starch to the gelatin because gelatin was the untouched at that time in most of the studies a retrospective core cohort was done and they found change of the colloid from hastars to gelatin did not reduce the change of arf or mortality in surgical patient and both have the dose dependent effect on renal function similarly another resuscitation fluid types in sepsis surgical trauma patient a systemic review was done and meta analysis which included all the indication of the colloid versus crystalloid sepsis be surgical trauma and they found from the meta analysis from the pubmed ambes and cochrane database for all the studies to till 2020 they found that valence crystalloids and albumin decrease the mortality more than hastat and saline in sepsis patient However, saline and hastat were better than oncotic albumin or crystalloid in traumatic brain injury. Means they found that saline is the common factor which decreases the mortality either in the brain or in the resuscitation. Ah, uh, at the same time, the survival, as the Dr. Chatterjee has said, survival sepsis committee company has their different view. They found that crystalloids in 2012 it was they saw shows that crystalloids are the inial fluid of the choice in resuscitation and the indication was grade 1b they were against the use of the starch as a grade 1b and albumin as a grade 2c in severe sepsis in septic shock this uh, changes were again more uh, affected in 2021 where they said crystalloids are the first line of fluids and this evidence is very strong and moderate quality while there is crystalloids instead of normal saline it was a low quality and again starch it was strong high quality evidence in 2021 sepsis guidelines and use of the albumin is the weaker evidence means has starch is the least to be used albumin may be used the crystalloids are the best for the uh, resuscitation in the sepsis patient now coming the most important factor is the expense the biggest disadvantage of colloid resuscitation is their higher cost using equivalent to volume of 250 ml of colloid and 1000 ml of crystalloids the cost is around 3 times if has starch is used and 6 times if albumin is used than the isotonic saline so Please if you go yeah time concluding if you completely see the cost of the parental the ns is just 0.2 dollar that is only 17 rupees in indian currency the albumin is 30 to 50 dollars in indian in us dollar that equivalent to 2500 to 4000 which is quite substantial amount while the has starch is around 4 dollar so coming to the cost wise even crystalloids are much much easier and much is easily available and affordable than the colloid so with this if i says if you have any problem with the dinner and you get in the icu my icu i will still will not be saying ki what should i give in the lactate the albumin the hastarch or the saline i will directly go with my crystalloids thank you very much so a very good evening uh, to an august audience and i would like to thank the organizers 
uh, Dr. Uh, Madi and Dr. Ranajit for inviting me for this excellent debate. Now, my job has been made easier by the previous three speakers and the moderators. So, uh, the debate has been till now regarding saline versus balance salt solution and crystalloids versus colloids. So uh, we didn't have a clear winner in the previous debate. Now I am I am to debate whether colloids should be left or it should be removed altogether. Now Dr. Lalit has already said that uh, all the evidence, all the guidelines say that colloids should be removed, should not be used. Uh, in fact, uh, it's a money making scheme, costly, not benefit. But there are certain situations, and I am going to defend that colloids should not be removed from the shelves of the ICU as fluids for resuscitation. Now, fluid resuscitation is required in trauma, traumatic brain injury, burns, perioperative period, and sepsis. So trauma, TBI, burns, and perioperative, that is the most common indication. Sepsis, yes, patients presenting in uh, septic shock with the distributive shock, they do require fluids, a large amount of fluids, and there are concerns. All the evidence that has been provided has been for sepsis till now because that is, that is what makes a major chunk of the ICUs, but I'm sure that many of the intensivists would be working in various other ICUs, which cater to these other patients as well. So uh, in a subgroup of patients, yes, to a certain extent, I agree that crystallites do have an edge, but to uh, do away with colloids altogether would be a foolhardy thing. So we again, it has been discussed, starches, heta, hexa, penta, tetra, uh, 6 to 10 percent, molecular weight uh, 200, 130. Now, the higher molecular weight, it has been conclusively pro proven. They are harmful, should not be used, withdrawn for, from the market. So, the debate boils down to 130 and the tetra starches. So, I'm not going to talk about heta, hexa, penta. That has been amply covered by Dr. Lalit and, and I support him on this, that the older colloids, they are no longer in the market. We won't talk about them. But the tetra starches, yes, 130.4. That will be my uh, focus of discussion. Gelatins, the new entrants, human albumin, 4%, 5%, and 22%, 25%. And dextrans. Now, again, dextrans are uh, very rarely used, except the only use that I have seen in, for dextrans is that they reduce the viscosity. And uh, certain plastic surgeons for their flap surgeries, they prefer a continuous infusion of dextrans to uh, reduce the uh, viscosity and improve the uh, vasculature, uh, microcirculation of the flap. So again, dextrans have their use. Being a colloid, they have to be there. I'll be touching, touching a bit on albumin in the TBI. Uh, most of the work has been done by Dr. Lalit and uh, the uh, speakers previous to me. So this is the composition. I'm not going to go into much detail. Again, has been talked. I've got a very few slides. So I'll just uh, uh, rush you through the evidence and what I have to present. Now, uh, we have the crystalloids, NACL again, the uh, normal saline no misnoma, unbalanced uh, saline, uh, neither normal nor uh, physiological. Then we have lact uh, lactate ringer, acetate, acetate ringer, acetate gluconate, that is the plasma light, and the malate. So again, the verdict, whether acetate is good, gluconate is good, or malate is good. Now, if this would be a pharmacological industry uh, ploy, we don't know. Uh, studies are awaited, which one is better, lactate, acetate, gluconate, or malate. And then colloids, again, we have already talked that 130.4, if at all to be used, are the ones to be used. Then we have the gelatins, 3% uh, or 4%, not uh, or even 6% gelatins. 3% gelatins are not preferred, 6% or 4%. Then the uh, newer starches that we are coming up, I'll talk, talk about them in the end. So as you can see, the strong ion difference of the various fluids that have been mentioned in the extreme right corner of the screens. So the colloids are preferred because of their high molecular weight. But as we know that higher the molecular weight, the more the problem. So we stick with 130 uh, kilodaltons. Maintains the plasma oncotic pressure. That is the main thing and the main hydrostatic force which will prevent the fluid from uh, gravitating towards the interstitial uh, space. Plasma expansion 1 is to 3 compared to crystalloids. Again, this has been challenged. Closer is, again, I accept it is around uh, various studies have said 1 is to 2, but still more than the crystalloids and a longer half life. Definitely, although there are studies saying, but in sepsis, even the half life of uh, crystalloids is prolonged. It uh, goes on from 20 minutes to as high as 1 hour, and for colloids, 
from uh, two to three hours to as long as eight hours. So that is another benefit that the colloids are to be preferred in certain group of patients. Now, what are the concerns regarding what uh, concerns regarding the uh, going away or uh, doing away of the colloids? Uh, there are five major concerns which were cited by Dr. Lalit. The first one is mortality. I'm going to prove that mortality, the various studies have shown that there is absolutely no difference in mortality. AKI and RIT, most of the studies show that RIT, uh, the incidence of RIT and AKI is increased with uh, colloids. Again, I would say that that is not correct. Hemodilation and hypercoagulability. Yes, to a certain extent, there have been studies which show that the coagulation tests are deviated. There is increase in tech parameters, there are increase in temp, temp parameters, there have been various studies, I'm not uh, quoting them for lack of time. Uh, I have prepared my slides for eight minutes and try to finish in that time. But there are studies which do say that these parameters are prolonged, but when they saw the evidence in terms of blood loss in surgical patients and the amount of blood transfused in these patients, it was exactly the same. And the effect is almost the same as would expect of hemodilation with crystalloids or colloids. So now, again, the question arises, are we treating the patient or are we treating the investigations? So if you are treating the investigations, yes, colloid is a culprit. But if we are treating the patient, then uh, hypercoagulability does not weigh in. Allergic reactions, the older uh, starches, Yes, they were there. Um, HES, uh, that is starches, very less. More with gelatins. Again, more with urea link gelatins, no, no longer used. Much less with succinylated gen, uh, gen, gelatins. But then each drug has its own incipient and excipients. Again, I'll come to the composition a bit later when I talk of the future trends. Uh, could be because of the source of the gelatin, which can cause these allergic reactions. But yes, but not worrisome because fluids like any other uh, component, they're still drugs. So they have to be used as drugs. It's not just that we are giving fluids for the sake of it. Any fluid that is given is a drug and there are certain risks that we have to accept with that drug. Cost, I totally accept that these are uh, costlier than the crystalloids, but then if the benefit is definitely there, then the cost does not matter, as was pointed out by Dr. Chatham. So started in 89, then again, uh, the major thrust come in, came in 2012. There were certain studies quoted by Dr. Lalit, which were against the colloids. This was a study by Bayer. Again, they said the major important thing was that it was equally fast with synthetic colloids or crystalloids. Use of colloids resulted in only marginally lower required volumes of resuscitation. The difference is there. Dr. Lalit accepted it. And they again said that, that starches and gelatin both may impair renal function. Now, I quoted this study because they it was a three-way study. They compared HESTAR, hist uh, they compared gelatins, and they compared the crystalloid. So, Important thing to note was that patients received 20% human albumin in addition to histar and gelatin in the colloid group. Now, this was not part of the study, as has been discussed earlier. The chloride load, as the chloride load increases, the renal injury increases. Now, remember, when we talk of even uh, like Dr. Saf said that the difference was only a 3 millimole uh, difference in the chloride levels. But is it actually 3 millimoles? In a septic patient, even the sodium load will matter. Kidneys are already hypoperfused. The patient is already in shock. There is already acidosis. So all the systems, all the metabolic systems of the body are already down. So even minor loads will amplify. So even this small of a difference will weigh in when you talk of physiological reserve of the patient. So yes, it does make a difference. Now, again, I would take the renal function part with a pinch of salt because uh, Patients, again, they said that the HESTAR uh, caused more uh, uh, renal injury, but then more patients in the HESTAR group received 20% albumin as compared to gelatin, whereas none of the patients received uh, human albumin in the crystalloid group. Okay, so again, the renal injury not standardized. This was a Christmas study. So 174 out of 196 patients reached uh, hemodynamic stability. 
significantly less volume was required to achieve, achieve the hemodynamic st stability with HES versus NACL in the initial phase of fluid resuscitation in severe sepsis without any uh, difference for adverse events in both, uh, in both groups. Now, remember, this was a prospective study. 174 patients, a sizable number. Yes, there were studies, but again, this study came in 2012. That was when, in two, between 2012 and 2016, when the people sitting and making the guidelines knew and categorically uh, hammered the last nail in the coffin of uh, the colloids. They did not take this study into consideration. 2013, the crystal trial. Yes, again, there was uh, a post hoc analysis done. The actual rates observed were that there was a no difference in mortality even at 90 days. Uh, and that was an extrapolated finding. So in the kaplan meyer survival graph was uh, done, that is what was uh, the this thing. So as I said, you can prove anything with statistics. You want to prove uh, one thing, okay, I'll do the stats this way. If I want to prove the other thing, I'll do the stats the other way. I'll just shift the goalpost and count it as a goal. So that is not done. So the goals have to be predefined for any study to have credibility. Again, yes, extrapolation done, but actual results, we do not know. But with the actual results published, yes, there was a difference in mortality. Even if we say that the uh, risk was less in uh, the colloid group, I'll grant it, okay, it was equivalent and not very significant. Now, uh, 2016, I can accept they were uh, not, uh, the evidence was uh, more or less against uh, the colloids and hence they had to be dropped from the guidelines, both the European and the surviving sepsis. Now, this was, an, uh, this was a Cochrane review in uh, 2018 by Louis et al. 69 studies, 65 RCTs, four quasi RCTs with 30,000 patients. 28 study start solutions, 20 dextrans, 7 gelatins, and 22 albumin or FFP, and compared it to crystalloids. So starches versus crystalloids, no difference in mortality, 90 days. Okay, slide increase the need for blood transfusion, 1.19. Eight studies, RRT, 1.3. Again, these were very low certainty and are certain whether either fluid affected adverse events. The time is 11. We found later or PM. no difference in allergic reactions. <clears throat> Itching was less with crystalloids, but then again, these patients are receiving a lot of drugs. So we don't know what causes actually the itching or the allergic reactions. And rashes again with crystalloids. So again, only two studies, 7,000 participants. Right? Dextrans versus crystalloids. No difference. Again, the same. Gelatins versus crystalloids little or no difference in mortality uh, within 90 days. Within 30 days, again, relative risk of 0.92. Evidence for blood transfusion was very low certainty. Um, RRT for gelatins, they found only one study. Again, no difference was found. Albumin versus FFP, uh, albumin or FFP versus crystalloids. And mortality, again, no difference, 90 days. Within 30 days, again, a relative risk of 0.99. Transfusions, nothing. Albumin, nothing. Allergic reactions, very low certainty. So again, the adverse effects that are quoted are there for any drug which could be administered and could have cost. Again, 2019, this was uh, another meta-analysis by Martin et al. So 27,000 patients, 55 RCTs. And the highlights were the crystalloids less effective than colloids at stabilizing hemodynamic endpoints. So again, reiterating the fact, then in patients in whom you would like to restrict the amount of fluid to be given, who are sicker, yes, colloids do make a difference. You achieve the hemodynamic uh, endpoints faster. Then again, when to switch over to, uh, from crystalloid to colloid or from colloid to crystalloid. And it's a well-known fact that even uh, Dr. Lalith accepted it, that higher volumes of crystalloids are required in the ICU compared to colloids. So if you look at the studies, safe study, which he quoted, uh, quoted and which was uh, the starting point of the uh, death weight of uh, colloids. Again, trauma and non-trauma admitted to ICU, blinded, but uh, then mortality, there was no difference, but yes, they said 
that uh, the uh, RRT was more, but then the major factor was that uh, there was no consensus when to start the RRT. The RRT was started on the basis of their own whims and fancies. Yeah, Feast, one minute, Bishop. Yeah, sure. I'll just finish it off. So feast is uh, again resuscitation phase. Uh, this was with the uh, bolus, so we are not going to go into that. Chest uh, trial. Again, this was the optimization phase, not the resuscitation phase. Success, yes, again, there was no, uh, they're saying when to start the RRT. There was no consensus. Christmas, I've already talked about. Crystal, I've already talked about. These were the things, uh, these were the two trials which were not taken into the consideration. So now, how to decide the future? Saline is not so normal. We have discussed it. Balance all solution, yes, already discussed. Maybe better. Albumin, uh, trial that showed uh, no difference, but it showed a better effect in septic shock. Gelatins, yes, no difference in mortality and other uh, adverse effects. Increased RRT, again, I would take with a pinch of salt. Anaphylaxis, yes, to a certain extent, I'll agree. So, what is the ideal fluid? The quest continues. Sepsis, uh, balance solutions over 0.9% saline, that, is, that would be the consensus. Uh, crystalloid over colloid, if fluid overload is not an issue, but where you cannot give a major amount of fluid, I would definitely go with colloid. So colloid does hold an edge over crystalloid in certain situations, and albumin definitely reduces the mortality. There are studies, and uh, yes, can be used in combination with crystalloid or colloid, but then the dose should not exceed. In ARDS, less, lesser fluids given, the better, and overall fluid balance is more important than the nature of the fluid given, major abdominal surgery, uh, when you give colloids, preoperative fluid balance uh, has to be maintained to minus 0.2.5%, not more than minus 2.5%. Colloids have been shown to be beneficial, urgent uh, surgery, and uh, yes, there's a, uh, they're usually septic, so the same consideration as sepsis would apply regarding use of colloids. Trauma, crystalloids do remain the first choice, amount has to be restricted, and colloids... Yeah, yeah. Colloids to be used if crystalloids fail to maintain the map. Balance salt solution is preferred. Uh, safe TBI trial has limitations. Uh, albumin was given in patients who were sicker with uh, lower GCS scores, and they had used 4% albumin, which is hypotonic. So 5 to 20% albumin and hypotonic salines going by principles of LUN is beneficial. Burns again 5 to 20% albumin and colloids to maintain the oncotic pressure. So verdict is still suspended. The future is among balanced crystalloids, balanced starches, gelatins, and low salt albumin. So we are reducing the sodium as well as the chloride overload. Studies are still awaited. Gelatins, potato starch, maize starch, uh, animal starch, can't say. So all things are poison and nothing is without poison. The dosage alone makes it so a thing is not a poison. That was a quote by Paracelsus, 1538. So again, as uh, sir, you said that it is the clinician who has to decide which fluid to use when and he's the best judge. This is my college. I come from Lady Hedding Medical College. Thank you for listening to me patiently. Thank you, Dr. Dishraf. You have uh, tried to defend yourself as much as possible against um, Dr. Lalit, and rightly so. You have done it very well. Uh, you have taken one and a half minutes more than Dr. Lalit, so I'll give Dr. Lalit mm -hmm. a chance for rebuttal, for, and he can take one and a half minutes more if you want. Yeah, Dr. Lalit. sure. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Nishant has very beautifully described the few good qualities of the colloids. However, if you see the most of the meta trials and RCTs, they have to say that in parts, crystalloids, the volume has reduced drastically to the only 1.5. And in the sepsis and trauma, that volume doesn't matter. The cost is very important because in the LMIC countries and where the uh, resources are limited, the crystalloid is the only hope. And if you are going for the college, either your patient will have the higher mortality or you will not be able to achieve the target. And the third thing is that uh, the crystalloids are long tested, they are safer, they reduce the renal imperf imperfections and on over the college, the few studies are only the support them. However, their uh, RCTs and their denomination, like in the Christmas studies, has already been changed, which has shown the good benefits of college. So I will still say as far as possible, I will use crystalloids in my case. As you have initially described, sir, that in the cholera, it was the crystalloid, which changed the history of the fluids in the human kind. And similarly, I think 
till the better substitute of more than less than 130 by 0.4 substitution is available for the colloids we should go for the crystalloid because colloids in some or higher dose are more dangerous than crystalloids thank you very well said dr lalit very well said uh, dr nisha yes your comments uh as i said i agree to most of the parts what dr lalit has said but then these studies have to be taken with a pinch of salt as i said mortality benefit has not been shown with crystalloid or colloids it's the same cost i've already accepted yes but then again see the role of the colloid comes when you are not able to maintain the hemodynamic stability with your uh, crystalloids and there are uh, situations patients of sidh how much of fluid are you going to give you might have to give colloid at some point or the other an actively bleeding patient blood is abated that is not available or it is lmic i'll give you an example how frequently you have had to run for the blood to other centers uh, uh, red cross society or some other hospital in spite of your institute being uh, a tertiary institute in uh, the capital city of india so that is where the utility of colloids will remain traumatic brain injury yes hypertonic saline has come up in a big way albumin there were concerns about use in uh, uh, septic patients but yes with crystalloids why not i'm not saying they should be used as a sole therapy but they cannot be ruled out and cannot be taken out of the shelf they have their own importance and again it is again i am stressing that it is a judgment and the art of the physician when and how to use them and as i said everything is a poison even oxygen is a poison we know we we read about oxygen toxicity so <laughs> <laughs> it's excess of uh, chloride very well said by uh, dr uh, neeraj you can't keep on giving crystalloids right so everything oh. has its own place and yes future we'll have to see balance these things uh, potato maize animal starches let us see there's a lot we have to learn as of yet all right uh, dr neeraj uh, 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 dr dishant you have really defended yourself well because uh, everything every point was basically against the colloid still now the world community now is completely tilted towards crystalloids so lalit uh, uh, didn't have to do much of in fact lot of effort to prove himself because the, many of us and most of us are still vouching for colloids might be using crystalloids most of our times but my point uh, in before because as dishant is uh, basically playing in a very weak wicket so i i just want to uh, tell one or two points in favor of him i think why didn't i don't know why didn't he tell about this thing my main contention was why this colloids has been completely rooted out on the basis of only three studies there was the vice study the six study on the test yes, track yes yes if you see if you see the guideline that only these three studies again and again now you know you can tell dr lalit you, you will you will agree with me that the vicep trial is one of the most impractical trials that can be done in, in today's today's world you are taking two uh, two hands of the trial on one hand you are telling i am comparing the insulin status that is the hypoglycemia status on the other hand you are using 10% uh, the the dispenter start which is already a high molecular weight colloid and you are telling yes it causes more of renal replacement therapy very funny and you have already given 100 patients out of 252 colloids before randomization so why this study does not stand six a study it is telling yes 90 day mortality along with the renal replacement therapy is increasing in colloid fine but the fragility index was only 2% that means if you change two patients from this side to that side the whole statistics will change, will change. can you de depend on these trials to defend the colloid and the final one that is the chest trial the australia and new zealand I, if if somebody from that part of the world is listening to me i want to tell them you have done a study where you are showing in the rifle criteria r i and f the r and i that is the risk and injury are more with normal saline than that of colloid and they are reaching statistical significance the f is more with colloids the failure part but it is not reaching statistical significance funnily very funnily 
you have shown that the renal replacement therapy is going to statistical significance outcome where you started these renal replacement therapy somewhere in rm there is a risk and injury part where normal saline is the cause of the collapse uh, or the cause of the uh, renal injury that means you are showing a study and you are quoting the whole world community is quoting this study and telling that collards are bad i only differ here yes there are many other instances which can be seen and collards definitely causes some amount of renal injury some amount of hypercoagulability but it should not be written off from the history if the patient is not having any aki if you are within 6 hours of your resuscitation if your patient is hypovolemic and if you do not exceed the highest limit of colloids that that is been recommended 20 ml per kg but i still feel that colloids can be used in initial resuscitation of septic patients this is my view point but definitely we are better said than that we are all using crystallized nowadays i leave it to the audience to decide actually to introspect whether these studies were fair enough to decide that colloid should be removed from the cells of critical care thank you so much uh, thank you panelists and uh, thank you dr sar uh, to give this opportunity to all our young players and the young doctors very 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 strong energetic doctors to be a part of this very big platform being uh, going to multiple countries and where they're listening to this i think is a great opportunity for them great opportunity for all of us to interact with thank you so much